they run much better when I put some gas in them. <laughs> Today, today we're going to take out a trailer full of hit and miss engines that hasn't seen daylight in over 20 years. It's been in the shed, under cover, and now we're going to open the doors and we're going to get them out and see, see what if we can possibly get them running, if we have to clean them up or what we have to do to them. So I'm going to go and open those doors and then we'll hook on the trailer. This tarp is a trailer load of engines that I used to take to engine shows, thrashing bees, and used to put them on display. But I haven't done that for many, many years, and they've been sitting here under the tarp. And you can tell by the jack, it's sunk in the ground about eight inches. I hope the tires aren't flat. So we're going to jack this up now, get it out of the ground, and we're going to pull it out with my Z Moline and see what's under that tarp. I hope they're all there yet. I never thought about the tires. I don't know if this jack's going to work. Snap out of it. There we go. I don't work out to get this out of here. Now we've got it up on its own jack. Let's get that tractor and hook onto this thing. They run much better when I put some gas in them. <laughs>
Okay, I feel like I'm unveiling a statue for the first time, a monument to history. I gotta unhook all the bungee cords holding this thing on. Probably one of them. Here's one. <laughs> Well, there's no stretch to the bungee cords after 20, 20 some years, they're shot. Well, you point there. I hit the muffler. <laughs> My grandpa's in you. Okay, I'm pulling it off. Here it is. 20 year old tarp kind of out of shape. Oh man, I don't know if it'll come off. It was brand new when I put it on. Well, there's a pumper on the pump jack. Take a month to clean them up. Ooh, some rust on the front. No snow glue in there. Ah, these bungee cords. Six force. Still there. Didn't figure that going nowhere. Big one stuck. Oh. That one's not. This one's not. This one is. No, it isn't. Just it's, it is just heavy. Oh, she got compression. I completely overhauled that engine. Man, has it got grease and dirt on it? mostly dust. This thing needs to be cleaned up. When I bought this uh, grinder, I got it from a guy who had it in his shed, and he says, oh, you you live down that direction in southeast Minnesota. You you probably know the Winona Manufacturing Company. Well, this thing was made in Winona, Minnesota, and there's very little records of the company that made it, but it's real interesting to, to search that stuff and go through all it. I think it was a, a shoot off from the, uh, the tractor company they made in Illinois. The tractor was made by I can't think of the name of it now. <laughs> Polar and Johnson found in the weeds. My wife found it. I didn't find it. I was looking at a gravity box and she saw it sitting in the weeds and it was just a gob of rust. It was on some big wheels with a saw rig and it was all rotted away. The, the igniter was missing. And I can't remember what else was missing. But anyway, there was more bees living in that cylinder. So we had to take it all apart. Take it out. I had to make a head gasket for it. Chris Romnus helped me make the head gasket. This engine, uh, a guy by the name of Sandy McManus <laughs> was working for the wa Waterloo uh, engine. Uh, manufacturing company and he kind of broke away from that company and started his own and, and he copied a lot of the Waterloo engine and he made his made his own but again there was a lot of legal battles and stuff over it. Sandy McManus was his name. My grandpa bought this engine. He bought it down in Iowa and laid it on, a, one, on the farm beside the windmill. It used to pump water on the windmill. It laid on its side for years and years and years. And I thought, well, there's a lot of pieces missing. The head was broke. 
couldn't find parts, you had to make parts, so roll them up, do whatever you could. And then it ran, it runs beautiful when it runs, it hasn't run though. This one, this engine was basically a mistake. Uh, when Fuller and Johnson made this engine, it's hit and miss. That, that, that means it, 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 it'll hit, bang, and it'll go around and then slow down and then bang and it'll take off. And when it does that, it puts so much pressure on the rods of the pump, it would break the rods. And years ago, the pump rods were wooden. I still have some in the shed, the old wood pump rods. And they would break very easily with a big jolt. So they had a lot of trouble with that. They weren't the most desirable engine, but they sure are, are fun to see run as long as you don't have them on a full size window. Gordon Johnson, Mad Madison, Wisconsin. So was the big engine. The little Maytag, the two cylinder, I don't even remember where I got that, but it was a gob of rust, took it all apart. Went all the way through it, cleaned it all up, and it ran. Ran good. I want to put a single cylinder on here too, just to show the difference and have them both running. The mobile I got from my neighbor, uh, the neighboring farmer up here, best neighbor a guy could ever ask for. Anyway, they use it on a grinder. Slowly they sharpened it. Sickle blades, the swather, and uh, Swathers, haymores, so it didn't get used a lot. Yeah. Anyway, my neighbor Fred, he always told me he could never understand why that engine burned so much oil. He thought it needed overhauling. Well, there's no oil pan on these things. There's a drip oiler, and the oil drips down into the cylinder and oils, oils the connecting rod and cylinder, this wrist pin, and it gets in the, right onto the, the piston. And it burns with the gas. That's where your oil comes from. If you have that omen too far, you're going to put a lot of oil in there and it's going to, going to smoke like crazy. There is no, <laughs> no, no reservoir for oil. McCormick Daring, International Harbor Committee, that mobile engine. I put them all on carts. I use wood from the, my wife's uh, farm, my father-in-law's farm. Had fun doing it, liked doing it. It was fun showing them. It's power of the past from the Maple Tree Forge. Okay, everybody, we got this trailer out with, with five antique engines on it, gas engines, hit and miss, and they all ran over 20 years ago, and they're gonna run again. And I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna work on each engine and get them running for you so you can see how they run and what they do. And I'm going to have fun working on it, and I hope you have fun watching it as I do it. We enjoy having you with us, and I hope you enjoy seeing what we're doing. We've got a lot more stuff lined up for you, so you keep watching. Thank you very much. So long, everybody, from Ozzy's Oddities. See you next time.